In Kenya, when you hear the word strawberries, you start to think of the red over juicy fruit that we see in our markets and supermarket shelves every day. But have you ever stopped to wonder how exactly this fruit is achieved? The process involved between planting and harvesting? And what exactly the farmer does to ensure he or she gives you a delicious, healthy fruit? Just like many plants, strawberries can also be propagated in a nursery or directly seeded in a readily prepared farm. There are over 40 varieties of strawberries, but here in Kenya, the three main ones are Chandler, Pajaro and Selva. Strawberries that are, are grown by Kenyan farmers are of uh, three main varieties. And uh, we talk of the Chandra F1 that uh, we are propagating here. We have a, uh, another Chandra, we call it uh, Giant Chandra, and we have a Pajaro variety. They all differ the fruits, the plant morphology, and also how big they grow in the field. Strawberry farming has huge income potential and can easily turn you from a job seeker to a job creator or from an employee to an employer in less than a year. However, many farmers are not even aware that there is more than one variety in our country that one can mint on. He tells us it's easy to distinguish the different varieties of strawberries just by observing the leaf or the fruit of the plant. We have uh, the strong leaf seedlings, whereby we call them uh, the all-bearing, all-bearing, all-season. All when you look at the, the Chandra F1, it has a, a broader and a thick leaf compared to Pajaro variety. But uh, when it comes to differen uh, differentiating between the varieties, we differentiate well using the fruit. Since the Pajaro variety fruit is different from the Chandra uh, fruit, the Chandra fruit has a hard cover, compared to the Pajaro variety, which, is a, which, has, a soft, which has a soft skin compared to, compared to the Chandra variety. The giant Chandra, it produces a big sized fruit compared to the, even the Chandra F1. The breeders are breeding a strawberry which can uh, give us big fruits. The only difference uh, between, the, no, between the Chandra F1 and the giant Chandra is when it, when it comes to the number of fruits produced per stock or the number of fruits produced per plant per week since we harvest weekly. In as much as strawberries are able to produce tasty fruits even under atrocious conditions, they prefer rich soil with a lot of compost and good drainage. Strawberries have shallow roots so they don't need particularly deep soils. Mr. Benson plants strawberries when he is first establishing beds. These seedlings take three to four weeks to be transferred from a seedbed to the farm. He explains to us how he manages his seedlings, especially when the stack starts to shoot up. In this bed, it can take three weeks, as you can see, but uh, it can take up to six weeks, depending on the weather condition. Since uh, even the regulated uh, conditions here in the greenhouse, you can uh, have scenarios whereby the, the, we have uh, heavy rainfall or we have uh, too much cold. So in case we have too much cold, in our greenhouse, we add a shed net. We add a net from here. Now, the net we regulate, the, we will put this greenhouse and the conditions that will support the, this uh, seedling growth. As you can see, it will produce stocks, and the stocks will come from this, this, this point here. And now the stocks are the ones that will flower. And when the flowers blossom, the first time, we pluck them off. We pluck the, them off to give space for this plant to have uh, to have a well root root beds and also to have uh, the strong stalks and also to minimize competition since when we have a lot of stalks in our plants we can have small sized fruits but when we, we minimize the number of stalks from we can talk of uh, it can produce up to five stalks we, we minimize the number of stalks from five uh, to three we'll be getting at least one fruit from each and every stock, each and every week. And each and every fruit, you can have a fruit which is up to 10 grams in weight. Mr. Benson agrees that strawberries are a staple crop in many gardens, both for their edible fruit and the ornamental appeal of their dainty white flowers and textured leaves. Strawberries have three different ways in which they are propagated. A farmer may go with a crown, the splits or the seeds, 
Mr. Benson chooses to use the splits and explains how it works and how he knows the seedlings are ready for transplanting. In our case here, we have propagated the splits. And what happens in the strawberry, once we get our split from the farm, we take off the roots. As you can see, these are newly developing roots. These are newly developing shoots and, uh, and leaves. This is the heart of the, of, the, of the plant. It wasn't there when we were propagating this. So this one didn't have any leaf and didn't have any root. Whereby, the essence of us taking this strawberry to this point is because we want it to root. Since when we subject it to a condition, a seedbed condition, whereby we are not taking care, we are not giving it a TLC, tender love and care. Since we have to, we have to feed this with the organic feed, we call it the polyfeed. We have to water twice or thrice a day. And you can see where we, we are doing it in a greenhouse. So we have regulated conditions. So what I mean, in this, in this, uh, this uh, crop, the, 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 the seedling itself, when you get it from the field, to this nursery, it will. Now, these are, these are three weeks old, and you can see in three weeks they have uh, roots, and uh, as you can see, they are ready for transplant. And actually, next week, the, the, the whole bunch this is the whole bunch of one acre, 24,000 plants. This bunch will be trans, uh, transplanted from Monday. And uh, because this is the first consideration, has it rooted? Does it have leaves? So it's okay and it's mature for transplant. Mr. Benson's company focuses more on helping the farmer achieve a uniformed seedbed and not milking the farmer's money by hiking the prices of propagated seedlings. His company buys the seedling at 25 shillings and sells them to the farmer after propagation at 30 shillings. At the moment, Jake's strawberry propagation site is hosting 2,400 seedlings that are due for transplanting in the next few days. The seedlings we propagate and uh, we propagate the essence what we're saying when we're doing this we're fighting viability and the uh, viability is a percentage germination when we when we transfer them from the this uh, uh, greenhouse to the field what do we expect from the what the uniformity of our land whereby we insist that in this greenhouse we get 90 percent seedling vi uh, vi viability so as you can see, we have propagated more than 24,000. But to the farmer, we are going to take 24,000 seedlings. Then this one, one seedling cost at shillings 30. One seedling cost at 30. The only difference between the, a seedling and a split is because our seedling has roots. And, uh, and you can see it has roots, well developed roots. But when you talk about splits, it doesn't have roots and it doesn't have these leaves. So, and a split will go, a split without roots will go up to 20, 25 shillings. The only, we, we, the, the only cost we incur is of uh, this pit moss, which is certified for rooting. Uh, the essence uh, of this is rooting. As a company, our, our, interest, our interest is not selling the seedlings. And when we're doing, th when we're doing this, we're helping our farmers get uniform seedbed in the farm. And uh, our emphasis is the final product because we want the strawberry fruit. And as a company, we put uh, more emphasis uh, of uh, emphasizing on uh, strawberry production from the word go. And for, from the word go is preparing our seed drinks. And as you can see, we have prepared for our farmer. And this farmer will be getting his bunch next week. The only difference between a split and this, we only add five bob, and five bob is the cost that will be used here. So when we when we purchase it at 25 from our, our, the same same outgrowers, we propagate it here and we sell at 30 bob from 25 to 30. So we don't make profits from the seedbed. Just like many farmers in Kenya, Mr. Benson ensures that he gives his strawberry seedlings nutrients by way of fertilizing. There are a number of diseases that can attack strawberries but full sun and well-draining soil go a long way to reduce the occurrence of these diseases. Keep your rows narrow and weed free to improve air circulation. We do organic farming in strawberries and uh, the aspect of organic farming, we mean the use of fertilizers and agrochemicals 
is always our last option. And uh, from this point, we're using a rooting media which doesn't have nutrients. And the nutrients that we add here is phosphorus. And uh, phosphorus will help in rooting and uh, also having the essence of calcium, where we also add calcium to give us uh, strong stocks. Here we use organic feeds, whereby we feed it through spraying. In as much as pesticides and the fertilizers are a bit expensive, Mr. Benson manages to buy them because he says they are good for his plants since they provide nutrients and control pests and diseases. Miss Margaret works closely with Mr. Benson. She demonstrates to us how they spray the pesticides, the insecticides and the fertilizers. According to Miss Margaret, pesticides can enter the body through inhalation, ingestion or absorption by the skin and eyes. The skin usually receives the most exposure, so it is important to cover as much of the body as possible. Spray, like if there if there's an attack of insect, this is a small one. And then if you need to drench, we use the watering can so that you make sure whatever you want out of the, the media is actually leaches out from, from other. So we drench using a watering can. We take a short commercial break, but when we come back, we will talk to Miss Margaret, who will tell us more about the nursery.